Welcome to Art with Laurel. Today we are going to be making a drawing. I'm at home in my studio, so you can see some of my artwork around me. Um, today, the tools that we're using are really simple. You could do this with just a pencil and an eraser of some sort. This one is a kneaded eraser, and I like that because I can shape it to fit anywhere in my drawing and use it for blending if I need to. You'll see me using both a uh, pencil and also a ballpoint pen. It's one of my favorite drawing tools. And some areas I needed to make darker, so I also have um, an art pen, it's a uniball, another ballpoint, but darker ink. And I'm using that for areas that I need to get dark quicker because drawing is a slow process. Um, and I wanted to speed this up for you guys to watch. As we go, one more thing that might be helpful is a ruler. I'm using this as a straight edge because this drawing, we're gonna make a few straight edges and then we're gonna fill in from there. First step for this drawing was I used my pencil and my straight edge to make basically a house shape. So I made a rectangle with a triangle on the end um, and put that down in pencil. And then I started filling in with circles. The circles, I started with large and then worked my way smaller. And I just used that as an exercise to get my brain warmed up and kind of relaxed and in drawing mode. It's rather meditative. So you guys can follow along and do the same. I have my circles in place and I'm switching over to my ballpoint pen because I want to put this down in ink. When I'm finished, my drawing will be a pen and ink. Um, so I'm starting to go over each of those circles just nice and slowly using the ballpoint pen. And I'll repeat this throughout the entire drawing. It's time for me to bring my straight edge in. I'm finding I want these edges kind of easier for me to see while I'm filling in my circles. That way I feel like my drawing will just be better quality when I'm all done. So I'm using my straight edge. Uh, I'm finding those pencil edges that I created initially and now I'm going back over them with ink. Do you guys have any guesses what we're drawing quite yet? I'll show you one of the things I was inspired by when I was out in my yard. I found this little tube in with a whole bunch of others um, and this is from one of my mason bee nests that I have out in my yard. The one I found looks like a little house. It was pretty beat up from being out for a full season through the winter. So I pulled the nest down, pulled the nest tubes out. I put them in a little box where the bees that are in there can emerge as soon as the weather is warm enough. Um, but I was looking at that like, hmm, that would be kind of fun to draw. It's got lots of interesting shapes. The shapes are fairly simple, but it's still a really cool object to draw and take a little closer look at. Time to add some more details on the house. I brought my straight edge back in and I am making the sides of the house a little bit more visible. Uh, the house that I have in my yard is made out of wood planks. So I wanna get that effect in my drawing. So I'm making those a little bit thicker. I'm using my eraser to go back and clean up all the pencil lines underneath the drawing because I find this less confusing as I go forward. And I'm gonna be bringing in some perspective to make this drawing look more three-dimensional. This drawing uses one point perspective. So I'm imagining a vanishing point that's located far off to the left and I'm using my straight edge to connect up with that imaginary point. That's what allows me to get the angles correct so that this looks realistically three dimensional. I'm using pencil again. I like to do this in pencil because often I need to make some changes and you'll see a change coming up here. I decided I didn't like how deep the box looked so I'm changing that. Um, again, make the edits quickly in pencil and then I'm able to go back and erase before I go to ink. Now 
Next part of the drawing, we're gonna make those circles into our three-dimensional nest tubes. So this one is a bamboo tube, and inside of here, there is a little wall made out of mud by Mason Bee. So we're gonna start working on that in the next part of the drawing. The first thing you'll see me doing is using my pen and going through and drawing the interior of that circle in the stem. And then I'm actually gonna create that little mud wall so that I can fill it in and continue making the drawing look more three-dimensional. I have the inner wall of the stem filled in, not in the whole drawing, but in most of it, enough for a reference. And then I'm gonna draw, it looks kind of like a little crescent moon, but that little crescent moon shape is going to mark off where that mud wall is inside of each of these stems. Once I get that in place, I am going to start filling it in with ink, and that is where my uniball pen comes in. It's a little bit darker, and it allows me to fill this in more quickly. At this point, I'm filling in with my heavier ink pen and getting that mud wall in place in each of these little circles. At this point, it's fun because the drawing is coming together really quickly, and I'm excited because this one is looking pretty similar to the idea that I had in my head. Once you're finished with your drawing, you could bring this out on a walk with you. You could go to a nearby park, or even if you have a garden in your yard, you could take a look in your garden and see if you can find any stems that are hollow inside. All of these hollow stems make great homes for our native bees, including mason bees. I hope you had fun drawing along with me. I'm pretty excited with how my drawing turned out. I hope you guys enjoy the drawing that you made also. And since we can't share together in person, if you guys have a drawing that you're excited about, feel free to put it into the comments because it would be fun to see what everyone creates. Um, until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Stay safe and get outside. Until next time, bye.